It is Thursday evening on June 23rd, and we have another exciting episode today. It is also my girlfriend's birthday. Hannah turns 23 today, so I wanted to give her a shout oh, out. Hannah. It is her LeBron year, so it's got to be a great year. Oh, God. <laughs> Shut <I> up. <laughs> you just ruined it. It was such um, a good, sweet thing, and then AJ just had to make it about himself. <laughs> um, but no, today we have our top 10 starting pitchers and other MLB news. That, inc- that includes a crazy Cardinals Brewers series that just wrapped up um, and Shohei Otani doing things that are just not human. But they uh, lost. The light- they did, yes. Uh, the Lightning and Av series is insane right now um, after a very controversial game-winning goal last night. The NBA draft is tonight. We don't have a whole lot to say about it because we did our mock draft last, last episode, but uh, that's something to tune into. And then lastly, we will be discussing your 2022 su- – Super Bowl champs today, the Seattle Seahawks. Um, so I look forward to that. <laughs> um, the 2022 uh, first pick in the draft team. <laughs> uh, and then we also, I didn't mention it, uh, we just wrapped up an interview with Isaiah Holscher, a uh, union graduate uh, playing baseball at the NEIA level at Hannibal LaGrange right now. So that'll be in the middle of this episode. Um, and track. And track. Oh, yeah. Duh. He's like a stud at track, apparently. Um, but uh, yeah, should be a lot of fun. You doing good? Four, yeah, four doing days good. down at four days down in the job. Yeah, four days down at the new job. Finally got done with HR training. Now can start doing some real stuff, which is exciting. Got to watch a lot of videos tomorrow on how to do the real stuff. So yeah. should be fun. How are you gonna spend your first weekend down there by yourself? Uh, probably just relax. I, I don't bet. know. Uh, probably, probably worn out, huh? Yeah, I am. It was. When Kaylee was down here last week, we made a lot of fun because we went to St. Augustine is like 40 minutes away, and that's a really cool city. Um, but probably just chill, watch sports, play some video games, maybe yeah. get a little like errands I have to run. Mm-hmm. And then the next weekend for 4th of July, my parents are coming down, so that'll be fun. Good. Watch some fireworks. Should we well, get- uh, I don't know when, but Hannah and I do plan on uh, going down there to visit you at some point over the summer so it's i look forward to it come on down <laughs> anyone can uh, come <laughs> just let me yeah. know first <laughs> do you have any did you see it today i do have one did you see it it was a okay. video on barstool sports it was uh i don't know if i sent it to you guys but i think i did but it was a lady or it was a girl and then her like mom or grandmother took these pills and she thought they were normal pills but they're actually her dog's uh flea pills <laughs> oh shoot <laughs> Oh my so gosh. she ain't getting fleas. Uh uh-uh. uh. Have you I've, you've seen the Seinfeld where Kramer uh uh takes his dog to the vet because it has the same cough as he does, and then yes. he starts taking the pills and he starts acting like a dog. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and I think we've mentioned Seinfeld before. Class Class A show by far. Like if we're doing our rankings, an S. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Superior. Um, I did have one. Did you see it today? I was. I felt bad for this guy. So uh, it was. Is it was this one like of those... a funny? Did you see it or one that's like sad? <laughs> uh, more fun. I mean, I feel bad for him, but it's not an actual like sad one. Okay. Like I sometimes bring those in. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, this person died. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. um, no, so this guy uh, did one of those parlays. I guess it was like a one dollar buy in, and if if these six things happened, he would he would have won twenty thousand dollars. So it sounds like a tremendous deal to me. Uh, he, he bet on Trevor Story, Josh Naylor, Marcelo Zuna, Jose Altuve, Bobby Witt Jr., and Aaron Judge to all hit a homer that, that night. I think it was earlier this week. Story hit one. Naylor hit one. Ozuna hit one. Altuve hit one. Witt hit one. And then he was down to Aaron Judge, who leads the majors in homers. Now, Aaron was supposed to be off that night. So yeah. there's some, some kind of rule where – he would have still won a butt ton of money. Did he, he pinch been, hit? He pinch hit in the ninth <laughs> inning and hit it to the warning track. <laughs> it was like the most like terrible thing that could happen. Um, so he didn't win anything. But it was literally like I watched it. I remember watching that that almost homer because it was it was almost a game tying homer. And uh, I mean, with the DH now, I mean over there, obviously the DH is already there, but. He probably thought Aaron Judge wasn't even going to enter the game, so he was kind yeah. of relieved, I guess. He was going to get – I think it was still like $10,000 or something like that. Um, 
but no, it's crazy to me that those five and then uh, it's just such bad luck, like <laughs> terrible luck. That's funny. Um, but today we have our top 10 starting pitchers, it's our last MLB list for now. And uh, is this the hardest one yet? Uh, it was pretty hard. There's a lot of good starting pitchers. Definitely. Um, I want to list off a couple honorable mentions that I had that, I mean, I hate leaving them off my list, but Brandon Woodruff, Robbie Ray, Julio Urias, Zach Wheeler, Kevin Gosman, Max Freed, and then I, I showed Adam Wainwright a little love there. Uh, Michaelis. St- Michaelis this year, yeah. Um, do you have any honorable Jack mentions o- off the top of your head? I guess Robbie Ray, uh, Joe Musgrove, um, Brandon Woodruff, some other guys you mentioned too. Okay. So let's get it started. I, I, w- I wish Conlon was here because I was going to actually – I, and when I'm like editing videos to post online and stuff, uh, I realize that I always lead us and then I like to say everything about the guy and then you share everything else. And then Colin's like, yeah, you guys said it all already. So I was going to, I was going to go in the reverse order, but, um, do you want to get us started so you can kind of have a, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll give like all the information possible. <laughs> okay. I'll just read every word on the baseball reference sheet. So <laughs> my number 10, let me count and make sure. Yeah, my number 10 is Alec Moana. Um, he could, at the end of his career in a couple of years, be at the top of this list, but he's only played two seasons. Um, last year was his rookie year, and he had a 3.22 ERA. Pitched 111 innings, was 9-2. and two, Super solid. And then this year, he's, like, pitching even better. He has a 2 ERA, 8 wins, 2 losses. Just, like like a stud for Toronto kind of helping them um, keep it going and trying to uh, get back close to the Yankees. But I think he's going to be really good um, in the future. He's already doing better than he did his rookie year. So that's good. You should be excited if you're a a Toronto fan. Definitely. Uh, My number 10 was also Alec Manoa. Uh, Like you mentioned this year, eight wins, two losses, a two ERA. He's got a 0.94 whip. Um, I wasn't a big whip fan, even though I understand it's important until I think it was you or Conlon mentioned it. I think it was you a few weeks ago. And I was like, I think I need to pay more attention to that stat because it's it's very important. Um, And so he's very young. Again, it's only his second year. uh, And I think he had like 20 starts last year, something like that. Yeah. Um, He's had 13 starts already this year. Yeah. So, I mean, he's also a very large man. Um, he's got, he's, he kind of gives me those Lance Lynn vibes, uh, the energy he six, brings. Six, six, two eighty five. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. And, uh, I knew he was a big prospect coming into the draft, I guess three or four years ago out of West Virginia. I was really wanting the Cardinals to draft and we skipped on him. And he, I think, and, uh, he went a couple picks after. Who did he pick that draft? Hmm. The first thing that popped in my head was Delvin Perez, but I, I'm not for sure on that. Yeah, um, but no, he's an absolute <clears throat> stud. And in a rotation where Ryu is out for the year with Tommy John, Jose Bar- Barrios has really not performed like he should He has have. good games and then really bad games. Yeah, he really does. Um, so it's really him and Gosman leading the pack there. But like you said, they're trying to make the playoffs at, at some capacity. <laughs> uh, so my number nine is uh, Sandy Alcantara, who I wish was on our team, but at the time, as you've mentioned before, it was a, probably a good trade. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he's 26, playing for Miami, probably one of the uh, bright spots to Miami. Um, I think our rankings probably are based a lot on how he's pitching this year. He's seven and two, one point seven two ERA. He leads the league in innings pitched, has a complete game. Um. In 2019, he was an all-star, but he also was 6-14 and 14 and had a 388 ERA. Um, last year, he was 9-15, and 15, but at a 3.19 ERA. He's just on, like, a really bad team, like the Marlins. So mm-hmm. he's 7-2 and two this year. Hopefully he can get above 500 in the win-loss uh, categories, but I think he's going to be a stud. He's just a workhorse. He's just, like, the definition of a starting pitcher who just goes deep into games and just pitches amazing. Yeah. It'd be nice to have him right now. Wouldn't it <laughs> now, now looking back on it, but uh, my number nine was Joe Musgrove. And 
I know it's kind of controversial, I guess. This year alone has been a top five pitcher, but uh, he's only 29, which I know we play future into this little bit, and I think he's really turned that corner because at first I was like, he's just like a middle-of-the-pack starter when he was with Pittsburgh. Um, the Cardinals actually always had his number. His ERA is like over six uh, against us. Good. But this year, 8-0, a 159 ERA and a .92 whip. And uh, really the the leading pitcher over there, the number one, the ace uh, for the Padres. And, and a Padres team that is really, I'm going to get into them in a little bit, but they're really holding it down without Machado and Tatis. So uh, their pitching staff's one of the best in baseball, and he's uh, leading the pack. Um, So number seven, this is where I think you're going to probably judge me a little bit because he was on your honorable mentions. But Zach number, Wheeler number eight, right? is what? We on number eight, right? Oh, eight. Eight, my bad. Is it is it Wheeler? Yeah, it's Wheeler. Okay. Zach Wheeler, number eight. Okay. Um, he was second in Cy Young voting last year, led the league in innings pitched, um, complete games, shutouts, strikeouts, um, some category that's BF, batter's face, that makes sense. <laughs> um, All-star, uh, 19th in MVP voting. He had a 278 ERA. 247 strikeouts, and this year he's pitching basically pretty similar to 7-7 ERA. He's 6-4, and four, 86 strikeouts so far. He's just been uh, really good these past few years. And in the COVID year, he was 12th in Cy Young voting. So he's had two really good years in a row, and he looks like he's about to have another one this year. Yeah, he. we talked about him before of how uh, really we always think Noah's the ace over there, but Wheeler's really been – like out pitching him, I think. Yeah. Uh, my number eight was Shane Bieber. Won won the Cy Young a couple of years ago. He, this year, three and three with a three ERA and a one point one seven WHIP. Uh, I don't have all the past stats pulled up, but I know he's been very consistent over these last few years. And uh, I have no problem. I'm sure you have him higher on the list. I have no problem with him being higher uh, on a Guardians team that doesn't get a whole lot of um, <clears throat> television time and and recognition. They've been playing really well. He's their ace, and they they just keep – I don't know if it's like their organization, uh, like development, but they just have tremendous pitchers just coming out of yeah. Cleveland all the time. I mean, at one point – help me out here. They had Bieber, Bauer, uh, Carrasco. Um, who's the other aces they had over Clevenger. there? Clevenger. Clevenger, and there was another big one that made it five. Oh, man, it's killing me. Zach Plesak. Plesak, yeah. He's still with them, I think. He is. It was one of those... Um... Let me get it here. It was whenever they were, like, uh, in the in the postseason a lot, and it was one of their aces. Hmm. Oh, man. I mean, they had Andrew Miller out of the bullpen. Cliff Lee was over there at one point. Yeah. Um... Are you looking it up? Yeah, I'm trying to find it, but I don't know if I can. But no, they just, it seems like they always have, Tristan McKenzie's there right now. Cal Quantrill's been pitching well. Uh, Aaron yeah, Savali. They, Savali, he, he's, I don't know if he was who I was thinking of. He's but good now, though. He's very good, yeah. So, I mean, the point is they have a lot of pitchers <laughs> that uh, I think they develop really well over there. But no, Shane Bieber is an absolute stud and uh, definitely worthy of being top 10. My number seven is Walker Bueller of the Dodgers. Um, as I've said many times, I don't like the Dodgers. That could all kind of attribute to him not being as high as some other people would have him. But um, he's only 27, uh, two all-star appearances, career 3.02 ERA, so super good. He had ERA of 2.47 last year. Um, he led the league in games started. Fourth and Cy Young voting. Uh, COVID year, his ERA was a little higher, 3.44, but still good. And then 2019, he had a 3.26 ERA, ninth and Cy Young. This year, he's not pitching as good as he would like. He has a 4.02 ERA, but he's going to get it down to below four, probably. He, he'll get it low back down to like the three fours or even lower. He's a great pitcher and another amazing player on the Dodgers that I, I hate to say it, but they're really good. Definitely. My number seven was Sandy Alcantara. And this year, I think we agree, probably the Cy Young. 
uh, in the National League besides if you want to say Tony Gonsolin, who's really kind of over overdone what we thought he was over there. Yeah. Uh, but Sandy's seven and two with a one seven two ERA, a point nine six <laughs> WHIP this year. Like you mentioned, an absolute horse and uh, a guy that I think is going to be the top of the rotation for many years to come. And that's why I have him uh, seventh over a guy like Shane Bieber because. Um, and, and some others, because I, I think he's going his, – his potential is a top five starting pitcher in baseball if he keeps this going. You do realize that him and Shane Bieber are like one year apart. Is Shane really that young? He's 27. Okay. I, I could have sworn he was 29 or 30. Um, yeah, Shane – and that's a good point. You could really flip those, I guess. Yeah, um, so my uh, – that's a good segue to my next person, okay. Shane Bieber. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, he's 27. Uh, already won a Cy Young. It was during the COVID year. I know, but he literally led. Mm. He had eight wins, led the ERA. Like, yeah, he only pitched 12 games, but that was a good stretch. Led, um, he pitched 12 games and had 122 strikeouts, which is he had four. He his strikeouts per nine inning that year were 14.2, which is crazy. Oof. And 2019, he was fourth in Cy Young voting. If that 2020 year was not COVID year, he probably would have been all-star that year too. Mm -hmm. And he, he could possibly get an all-star this year. He has a three ERA, just super consistent over his time in the majors. And uh, also just a stud pitcher who just gets strikeouts and gets people out. Yeah, he's got nasty stuff. Like, yes. Like all these guys. <laughs> yes. Um, Number six for me was Walker Bueller, uh, six and three this year, a four hundred five ERA. You mentioned that a little bit, and then uh, one twenty nine WHIP. Again, he's going to get that lower, but I was going to mention this later. He is on the sixty day IL with a bone spur problem, mm -hmm. um, so I don't know his status for the rest of the year. I mean, he's going to be back at some point, but um, he he's proven himself over the last few years. He's he's really. Uh, kind of taken the lead from Kershaw as the ace over there, kind of handed handed a, the torch off to him, Kershaw did. So, uh, yeah, Bueller's number six for me, and not much more to say about him, just absolute stud over there. Um, my number five is the old-timer Justin Verlander. Um, he has really, at 39 years old, he's pitching amazing. He has 2.30 ERA. He didn't play last year. I think he was hurt all year. Yeah, he was out all year. And then I think he got hurt during the COVID year because he only pitched one game. Mm -hmm. But before that year, he won the Cy Young and had a 2.58 ERA, led the league in games, started innings, and whip. So he's been incredible. He's had two Cy Youngs, an MVP. He's been top five in Cy Young voting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Um, just a stud. You gotta, you gotta give him the credit. He's an amazing pitcher recently, and he's still doing it at an old age, pitching like a a young gun. Yeah. Um, uh, my number five was Garrett Cole, six and one this year with a three one four ERA, a one hundred two WHIP, and Garrett has proven himself. I mean, he came up as a top prospect with Pittsburgh. Um, then he went to Houston, won a chip with them, I believe, and then uh, he's now with New York. Really just a cranky guy that I really don't like. Uh, I think he, he treats people poorly, and I don't know. I, I'm just not a fan of him, also being a Yankee. But got electric stuff. He took a no-header into the eighth the other night um, and and really just proven himself uh, over these, over these I don't know, eight, nine years. How many pitches? How many years has he pitched? Do you have uh, a ten. Down? Ten. So, yeah, he's – uh, absolute stud and kind of the uh, like like we're talking about Sandy, the definition of an ace. Um, he's my number four, Garrett Cole. I've been super consistent over these past years since he's been in Houston and New York. Probably been one of the top pitchers in the league. Obviously, having number four, he's been top five in Cy Young voting the last four years. Um, he's pitching great again this year, three point one four ERA, led leading the league in games started. Just super consistent, gets the job done. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if he can keep his ERA low without using spider tack, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it seems like he's doing pretty good so far. So my number four was Justin Verlander. So we we just flipped those two, but yeah, Verlander had Tommy John that COVID year, I guess halfway through it, something like that, and then uh, has been gone this whole time. But usually Tommy John, the the idea with Tommy John is you apparently come back stronger. 
Yeah. Well, I didn't think at age 38, 39 that he'd be coming back stronger, but he's throwing 98 still. Uh, he, he's doing like the Nolan Ryan thing where he's just like throwing gas at almost 40 years old. You know how mm -hmm. we see Wainwright not even close to that, having to th use 87, 88 and locate. Well, Verlander is still throwing gas by people at almost the same age. Uh, this year, he's my pick for the American League Cy Young if we end the season right now. Coming into the season, I had Garrett Cole. Um, so another two were like like we did. You can just flip flop them, but uh, definitely the ace over there in Houston and a team that's uh, you know once again up there, you know trying to win a World Series. Yeah, I agree. So my number three, uh, Corbin Burns, who has been like unhittable these last few years, mm -hmm. really crazy. Last year he led the NL and ERA. He had a uh, two point four three. The year before that, the COVID year, two point one one. Um, and then this year is a 2.31. So he, he could be at the top of our list. He's 27, mm -hmm. uh, came in the league a little older, but he's been crazy. And as we all know, cause we face him a lot, the Cardinals cannot hit him to save our lives. So mm -hmm. he's incredible. He leads the league in strikeouts right now or NL and he's, he could be facing, uh, he could win the Cy Young again. He won the Cy Young last year. Didn't mention that. And he could yeah. win it again this year. Definitely. My number three was Max Scherzer. And uh, now for the New York Mets. Yeah. You know, he's rubbing me the wrong way. I mean, I always was a fan, but he's rubbing me the wrong way going to L.A. and New York now. Um, we got traded to L.A. I, yeah, I guess that's true. I think I thought he had one of those, like, he has to sign it off, like, uh, things where he had to be okay with it pretty much. I but, think it was his last year, and he was like, I, I'd rather – compete for you'd something. at least get me get some return for the for me too instead of me yeah. just leaving in the offseason yeah well st louis guy uh five and one this year two five four era a 0.95 whip has missed some time but uh he is going to be back very soon he's already on a rehab right now and uh i just i'm waiting for that him to fall off the cliff a little bit and you know come back to uh, out of our top 10 because he's 37 i think now and uh but no, he's he's just the definition of a pitcher. Intense, can locate, has nasty stuff. First ballot Hall of Famer. Easily. So I, I think uh, he's going to, when he comes back, which is very soon, um, just in a, in a Mets team that really held it down well without him and DeGrom, I think he's just going to, you know, keep it going for the rest of the year. Uh, my number two against popular opinion is Jacob DeGrom. And it's based, like, he's a great pitcher, but a thing about pitching is you have to be able to be on the field to pitch. And the last few years, he has not done that. Like, he pitched only 15 games last year. He hasn't pitched at all this year. Um, COVID year, he, like, he pitched all the games, but it was COVID year. Mm -hmm. But he has won two Cy Youngs in 2019 and 2018. And if you just, like, would have pitched more games, I would – uh um put him up top but honestly my number one is just because i like him a lot and yeah. he's been super consistent his whole career but yeah. degrom is amazing he he is he did get i wish he wouldn't have gotten the league at such a older age mm -hmm. and would have been there younger because um yeah it'd have been fun to watch do you think degrom's a hall of famer if he can pitch more he's just got to pitch more yeah uh i think he i think Honestly, if he if he can pitch more, I think he's the best pitcher of all time. I think he's got the best stuff of all time. Really? Yeah, he's not going to have the stats that even come close to saying mm. it. And uh, that's we a could, really hot take. I don't know if I is. agree with you on that. He's just in like a ninety-five mile power slider and one hundred two, just easy one hundred two. I mean, when I'm he's biased, healthy, I I think Bob Gibson is the best pitcher of all time because they literally yeah. had to change the mound. Because yeah. he was so dominant. I'm with that. And, and Sandy Koufax is in that conversation, yeah. too. There, there's a lot of those old-time names. Heck, um, Kershaw's career ERA, I think, is lower than DeGrom's. And he's pitched 20, some, almost 20 years. Yeah. Uh, my number two was Corbin Burns. And coming off of Cy Young, that's really why I had him over Scherzer. Uh, and this year, nasty again. They just don't hit enough over there to get him wins. Uh, he has a lot of no decisions. He's 5-4 and four this year. I think last year he had, like, single... Uh, I want to say 10 or 11 wins, maybe. It wasn't a yeah. lot. And uh, th But this year, 2-3-1 uh, ERA, a .92 whip. And uh, 
he we Cardinals faced him the other night and he just looked unhittable actually. And uh he mixes that ninety six mile per hour cutter, which I don't even know how you even come close to hitting that. It has <laughs> tremendous movement on it. And uh yeah, he's the ace over there in Milwaukee. And then when Woodruff and Peralta are healthy, they have one of the best staffs in baseball. Um, so my number one, Max Scherzer. I just always liked Max Scherzer the way he played. He's just so consistent, so good. He's a career 3.15 ERA, but like after his first couple years, he never saw over a three again until like the COVID year. And he had a stretch of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years in a row, technically eight. I'm just not counting this. COVID year where he was in Cy Young, top five in Cy Young voting. He's won three Cy Youngs, 3,000 strikeouts, still doing it at 37, 2.5 ERA. He had a 2.46 last year, third in Cy Young, as I said. Just a stud and one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Um, yeah, he's first ballot Hall of Famer, as we said before. I just, lo- I just I've always loved watching him pitch. Definitely. And then my number one was Jacob DeGrom. And that's just going off when, like I mentioned, uh, when he's healthy, he's the best pitcher in baseball. And I don't think it's, it, even with Scherzer and uh, Burns, this might be crazy to say. I don't think it's very close. I, I, I think, think in prime Kershaw. Prime Kershaw, yeah. But like, I would say the last two years, I don't think anybody really comes close to touching him. He's, he's unbelievable. And uh, he's, he's going to be back. I have him on fantasy, so I'm praying. Please come back. Uh, but he's going to be back very soon. And with Scherzer, that's a tough – I mean, and the Mets team that's still up in the East by four games, they're just going to add to it. And they're, they're looking scary if those two can come back healthy and lead them into the playoffs. But yeah. um, it was a lot of fun doing these lists. Uh, we've, we've gained 4,500 likes because of these lists on TikTok and 115 followers. So that's really cool. But – um, I guess we'll start NFL and NBA lists coming in, and then uh, we'll be back with the baseball lists, you know, when the off season and stuff like that. But I do, I do want to say one thing about starting pitchers. I just pulled up Kershaw's stats, and mm-hmm. I think we did not give him do like he hasn't been pitched, like he didn't pitch great last year. But I feel like we should have put him on the list just because, like, yeah. Jesus, Legend. fifteen yeah. years, two point four eight ERA, um, three Cy Youngs. Literally, like the same run as during the same time as Scherzer was top five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years in a row. Um, he's 300 strikeouts away from 3,000 first ballot Hall of Famer. It's crazy. 73.5 war. I just I wonder how many, again. I wonder how many years he has left. He won the triple crown in pitching. Yeah. <laughs> like, he, I mean, he was in the MVP conversation. Yeah. But I think it was that year. Um, so good. But no, let's get on to a little Cardinals update here. We just wrapped up our series against the Brewers. Uh, we split it. I mean, we should have expect, expected that. I I thought we would win three out of four. Honestly, I thought yeah, we, we were going to lose the thought we were going to lose the first one, which we did two nothing. Burns was ridiculous, and then I thought we win the next three. But uh, game two, we won six two. Flaherty just doesn't look right still. Um, yeah. I mean, how many starts do you think it's going to take for him to hopefully get back to? He needs himself? to pitch faster. Yeah, he really slowed the pace down a lot. Um, but the highlight of that game was Nolan Gorman was four for four with two homers. Yes. Oh, that, that really was a good. stat. Uh, Nolan Gorman has more four hit games than uh, yeah. in his rookie's year than Joey Gallows had in his eight year career. Yeah. Didn't you send that to me? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, no, Gorman, Gorman's looking good. Still, I, I agree with you. They need to play him against lefties, which they did yesterday. Yeah, uh, does not look good against lefties though. But that experience helps. Yeah, uh, but yeah. no, he was he was hitting bombs the other night, and then game three we won five four. Wayno was eh, uh, wasn't his sharp Wayno. A lot he of needs pitches. Yachty. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about with Yachty being out a couple weeks. I don't know how if that affects the uh, record at all. Like I guess I they are calling the game, but or he's calling the game, but hopefully, hopefully go on like. Honestly, Yadi not being in the lineup probably helps our offense. Honestly, yeah. Um, but I hope they can get to that record still. I hope Yadi comes back. And then uh, Goldie and Nato both had a two-run homer in that game. And mm-hmm. I think Nato's was l- seventh inning, something like that, and that was a really big one. That, was, that got us the lead. Yeah, he showed a 
ton of emotion. And Arenado and Goldie have been amazing. They were saying Nado since 2015, I believe. Um, 40% of his home runs are go ahead homers in the game. Really? Simply. It's just, he's very, he's very clutch. Um, and then today was an afternoon game. We lost six to four to the Brewers. Hudson struggled again. Um, just a lot of pitches from Hudson. He went four and a third. I think he gave up five. And then the offense just wasn't enough today. But um, I was really hoping we'd win three out of four. Uh, but they're, they're one game above us now, I guess. In the, I thought we were tied game. going into it, so we should be tied if we split. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, we have the Cubs for three at home coming up. And then we have so the we Marlins. should sweep them. Yeah, and then we have the Marlins for three after that. So, so we should sweep games. them unless Alcantara pitches. I would say we have to win five out of six. Yes. I expect to win five out of six. But um, Jordan Hicks is in AAA. <laughs> Uh, he pitched a squirrel sitting the other night, uh, walked one, but he's looking better. Um, but I don't have Ooh, anything. Well, else. I just thought of something that I, I don't know. What about uh, Flaherty for Montes straight up? Ooh. Mo- Montes had a no hitter into the eighth today. I don't know if you saw that. Um, hmm. Straight up. Dang. Flaherty's How old's Flaherty younger. now? Like 26? 27? 26, 26, 27, and Montes is 29. But if you think Flaherty's going to go, wow, that's a, that's actually a really good uh, trade idea. Because I'm, I'm just, like, thinking, like, he, I don't know. Like, I, I think Flaherty's a really good pitcher, but watching him this last game, I just thought his body language was so bad, too. Like, he would throw a ball, and he just gets so frustrated with himself. I don't think we'll do something like that. No, because we we're, won't. We're very loyal. And, yes. uh, but that's really interesting, actually. I didn't even think about it. I was thinking like Burleson and all that stuff. I don't know if the A's would do it. I, I bet they would want a little more, even. Um, one of the prospects, at least. They'd probably want Burleson because everything I saw, they were wanting Walker or Gorman. Walker yeah. is untouchable unless you're getting Mike Trout. Yes. To me. And uh, Gorman's showing more than what I thought he was going to be. I know it's really early, but he's hitting the ball with a lot more contact, which I thought he was just all or nothing. Yeah. Um, but in that four hit game the other night, he took one to the left field. It was like a slider. They were trying to bring back over the outside part of the plate. And he just like dipped down and like drove it the other way. It, it looked really good, but that's an interesting. I want to talk to Conlon about that next time, too. Yeah. That's, a, that's an interesting one. Um, but no, I mentioned in the intro about Shohei Otani. So on Thursday or Tuesday night, he had two homers and eight RBIs, a t- uh, game-tying homer, three-run homer in the ninth. And uh, so, yeah, two homers, eight RBIs. It's crazy. The next night, he pitched and went eight innings, no runs, 13 strikeouts. Jesus. Like, unbelievable. And thank God I have him on fantasy. Ooh, it looked good. Yeah, screw um, you. Can you only play him <laughs> at one place, though? Yeah, I can only play him. So the, day, the night before, I had him hit, though. And then I got all the pitching the next night. But, no, he looked – I watched the majority of that game. It was the Royals lineup, but still, just filthy stuff. Uh, so was, like, it's the Royals lineup, so we could have struck out 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, he, he – uh, that was his most strikeouts he had in the game, the farthest he's gone into a game. And they got – it was one nothing until the eighth. And uh, he was at, like, 104 pitches. I was really hoping they'd get him, hopefully, his first complete game. But, obviously, you have to be a little careful with him. Um other stuff that's been happening, Aaron Judge is up 27 homers now. Could have had 28 to help out that guy a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Guardians and Twins are tied in the, in the AL Central. The Padres have won three straight games without Machado. We talked about that last time. Like, are they going to be able to hold it down? Uh, I mentioned Walker Buehler's on the 60-day IL. And we didn't mention the, that uh, Anthony Rendon is out for the year. Hmm. Um, I don't think Angel's going that. down fast. Very fast. And then I was, uh, or I was looking at the standings, and I think it's a good chance that there'd be four teams from the AL East in the postseason. I agree, definitely. Uh, the Yankees obviously are up by twelve games over Toronto, but Toronto, Tampa, and Boston all have a very good shot, unless mm. unless um, Cleveland or Minnesota has something to say about that. But Minnesota's yeah, that's, been that's who's I think yeah one of them was above Boston right now. And it'd be interesting to see if the White Sox can pick it up either. 
I think the Twins are going to fall off fast. That's my prediction. Um, they've been really falling now even. They were up by like five games over the Guardians, and now they're tied. And the Guardians are on a hot streak. So uh like to see if they keep it going. Then the last thing I had was DeGrom and Scherzer are close to returning, but I mentioned that a little bit already. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have anything else baseball-wise? I don't think so. But yeah, let's move on to the NHL. Not a whole lot to say here, uh, but game three, the Lightning dominated 6-2. to two. They got back in the series like we were talking about they needed to do. They needed to win game three and four. They looked really good in game three, but game four, it was 2-2 going into overtime, and Nazem Kadri, his first game back after his injury, scored the game-winning goal. No, I don't mean that. <laughs> and when he – I don't know if you saw it, but he scored it, and it, it tucked up under, like, the net. Yeah. So he thought it was saved, and Vasilevsky was kind of, like, laying on the ground, and I could already imagine, like I – can, I can only imagine the thoughts going into his head because he knew it was not under him, but he had no mm. idea where it was. And nobody was celebrating until I think it was JT Comfer went behind the net and saw the puck sitting on top inside the net. And he was pointing at it, and that's when they all went crazy. But the, the big controversial thing with that is, I mentioned that in the intro, is um, when he was skating down that right wing towards Vasilevsky, there was another guy on the ice that was not getting off. So they had six guys on the ice. And um, when you have possession and there's more than five on the ice, it's a, too many men, they blow the whistle, and then you get a, uh, a penalty. Well, everybody's saying Tampa had seven guys, because if you look at it, they did, but they weren't touching the puck. So that's where I'm confused is that, because um, I was going to get fired up and angry about it, but then I don't, I don't want to, I'm not positive about it. So yeah. usually... I sure pen- as hell don't know. <laughs> usually penalties are delayed, and when you touch the puck... Uh, that's when the play stops and whatever. But mm-hmm. so Tampa had seven guys, but they weren't touching the puck. So I just I just don't know how that works because obviously I thought the whistle should have been blown because there were six and K- Kadri had it on his stick. That's why a lot of dump ins uh, they do it at at center ice. Nobody's touching the puck and they change. Mm-hmm. Well, because if you if you look at it all times that when you make a change there's like eight guys technically on the ice even when yeah. you're watching in, in person um but then there's like the other like the crazy hypothetical that you could think of is you can't just have 12 guys on the ice and not touch the puck you know yeah so i don't know i don't know exactly how that works i saw one rule that said you have to be within five feet of your bench and then it's okay hmm. I don't know how you tell the five feet. You kind of just have to eyeball it. Yeah, I guess it's just discretion of the referee. Yeah. So um, as as someone who's cheering very against the Avs, I was really hoping they'd call that. Uh, Tampa Bay's coach, honestly, um, you'd think they're not going to show it, but you think he wouldn't care as much because they won two in a row. But he was yeah. very emotional after that one last night and said, I'm not even going to talk. Uh, just And his voice is cracking. And um, But no, he went back and... Game five is Friday in Colorado, up three to one. Uh, I predict, this is bold, uh, I predict they win this one and then win in Tampa but lose that seventh game. I had, I had to begin the series, I had the Avs in six, um, mm-hmm. but I think the Avs win in seven now. I, I do think Tampa comes back and wins the next two, but you think it's over Friday night? I think Colorado's going to win at some point. Yeah. <laughs> It, oh, on it, Tampa. It, it could be a blowout Friday night. That, I mean, that's Tampa or uh, Colorado's capabilities. They could just get hot and just blow it out. But um, I have I have faith in what the Lightning do over there. So hopefully, uh, they I just can don't make... want the worst owner in sports to reap the mm-hmm. benefits. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the NHL posted that the Stanley Cup will be in the building. Um, Friday well, night, duh. Obviously. <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, hopefully um, Tampa can come back, win that one in, in uh, Colorado, and then you kind of have some momentum going back home. And then Game Seven, anything can happen. We've seen three one comebacks happen, uh, and Tampa is a team that could easily do it. But let's move on to our last topic of the day. Who yeah, the twenty twenty two Super Bowl champs, Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> I have them Top at five six. draft pick. <laughs> I have them at six and eleven. What are you thinking? I have them at. Four and thirteen. Uh, They're gonna not be good. 
No, man. Well, I mentioned it off air that I had him at six and eleven because we play the Panthers, the Jets, the Lions. I think we'll split one with San Francisco. Yeah, you won't um, do that. And then my bold, my really bold pick is that we win week one against Denver. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were probably against that one, but um, no, I think we're going to kind of be more fired up to kind of show Russ what he's missing. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but no. We'll also be fired up to be like, this is what I can do when I actually have an offensive line. Oh, uh, it's definitely possible. After uh, they, their first draft pick this year was Charles Cross, offensive tackle Mississippi yep. State, who's yep. a big boy very large man and um for me it's right now they they keep talking about geno smith being the starter and honestly i'm surprised i'm not against it at all because i thought i liked what he showed last year but uh i'm really surprised because they got drew lock and i thought they would just give him the reins you, you don't have high expectations so i thought they'd just let it go with him yeah but uh no I, that's one question mark uh carson's health at the running back spot I don't know if he's done. I mean, he's he's going to get injured at some point if he does play. Um, but Rashad Penny was really good at the end of last year. I want to see if that continues. And you drafted Kenneth Walker from Mrs. Michigan, Michigan State. State. Yes, exactly. And uh, we also have DJ Dallas, who played a little bit last year. We, he was our draft pick the year before. And then, uh, I mean, offensively, you have a lot of weapons. Uh, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf are obviously still there. Until and- DK... Demands a trade. Um, I was I literally put is DK staying question mark because I have a feeling DK just seems like the type of person he just likes to be in the spotlight. Exactly. Um, where he's gonna request a trade and want to go to like I don't know. Some he, he probably city. wants to go to like a bigger city so he can enjoy all the clubs. Exactly. No, I I love DK as a player and obviously a physical specimen, but um. Lockett's easily my favorite player now on the on the Seahawks. I love his mentality. I don't know if I follow all the Seahawks pages, so I don't know if you see a bunch of his stuff, but just a really, I don't. really good head on his shoulders. And uh, yeah, I like tr- uh, Lockett. Kind of gives me that Russ vibe without all the cringiness, you know. Um, but he has no. to post it to like really uh, <laughs> like put it in your face that he's like the better than you. Yeah. Uh, I think the offensive line will be improved. I think Charles Cross will have his mistakes at, I think, left tackle. Um, but I think he's going to help, and they're going to mix and match, and I think they're going to be better. They drafted a couple more O-linemen in the draft. And then um, my last question, Mark, was, is it Pete Carroll's last ride as an NFL coach? I don't know. It seems like well, he's old. He... Yeah, he's the oldest coach in the league. Yeah, if I was him, I'd stop coaching and just enjoy retirement. <sighs> yeah. Um, he seems like he's doing – I mean, he's so fired up all the time, and I know he rubs you the wrong way. I've never I, liked Pete Carroll. <laughs> I didn't like him when I was a Rams fan here either. Uh, but as a Seahawks fan, I think we say this with so many people, is if they're on your side, you like them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah Except I, John I, Lester. <laughs> yeah, you didn't like John. No. Uh, but, no, I, I love Pete Carroll as a coach. I think his energy is – infectious and uh, i think it really just the players feed off of it um defensively we're without bobby wagner now so jordan brooks has to take on a bigger role and uh but i think the defensive line and the cornerback spots are still really weak and um but the safeties though i mean you have quandre Diggs and jamal adams yeah I think both of those guys are two of the top safeties in the league and uh but no that that defensive line they don't rush the uh, passer enough and cornerback wise it's just flipping like mix and match just throwing people in there these last yeah. couple of years and it's really been hard i i do think the seahawks i think they should start drew lock i know you're saying geno smith that they're mm-hmm. playing on starting him but i think drew lock has potential as a lot of people who listen to this drew lock was amazing at mizzou he had the SEC record for touchdowns in a season or season or yards in his career until I think Joe Burrow broke it but yes yep he has a cannon and I think like if he like plays and plays good you guys could win more than four games maybe like mm-hmm. six but uh <laughs> kidding you can probably get to 500 ish <laughs> even though you can't get in 500 anymore in the NFL yeah just because I think with his strong arm and like the speed of Lockett and DK it could be kind of exciting but they're not going to start him then <laughs> Yeah. Well, what about Baker Mayfield if they went something big like that? 
I think Baker's a good quarterback. I think a lot of people don't like Baker just because of his actions, but mm-hmm. I think he's a really good quarterback. He's always he. I think he just throws like when you watch him, he just throws a tight spiral, just guns mm-hmm. it in there. He tries to do. I think he does tries to do a little too much sometimes. Yeah, uh, I think he leaves the pocket early sometimes and tries to do these off balance throws. Um, but he is a smaller quarterback, so. But um, no, my final analysis was that as a Seahawks fan, you have to look for the small victories this year, uh, seeing guys improve, th- those younger guys. And I know it's the cliche, probably every team says it, but just take it week by week because you do see you do see uh, a couple bad teams that you're playing. I know you're a bad team yourself, but you win those bad you win the win those games against those bad teams. You steal one or two. Uh, divisional games we always we're going to compete i think against the rams i don't think it's going to be a blowout every nfl team competes yeah like every nfl team any team could win every any day definitely and so i think if you i mean just have that confidence that you can try to you know sneak and beat one of those big boys in in the division and who knows maybe you could be around 500 I, i think the playoffs are not even in question at all but um again i'm a seahawks fan i look forward to the season and uh should be fun but do you have anything else for this episode? I We did forget to mention big news that happened in the world of college football, and that is oh, Arch yeah. Manning. I think Yeah, it's Arch, not Archie. It's Arch. Ar- is it Arch? I think so. Or Archie, I don't know. Arch Manning uh, committed to the University of Texas. That's so big. let's see if uh, he can bring Texas back. If anyone can, it can be Arch. Is that, is that this year? Uh, next year. Okay. So we're talking next year. Okay. I believe. Dang. Dang. Um, so we'll see. I honestly feel bad for him because he has to live up to all these expectations. So, yeah. oh, and definitely. not only live up to the Manny name, but you have to live up to the University of Texas's uh, yes. football standards. So good luck. I do. He seems like a good person. So I hope he plays good. I've always kind of liked Texas, but I hope um, he plays good, beats Alabama. I'm surprised he didn't go to Tennessee or Ole Miss. You think, well, like he, it's a, their, his uncles. Yeah, I guess. Um, I thought they I think he just like Steve Sarkeesian's offense at Texas. Yeah. Um, but besides that, I guess we'll be back early next week. It'll be a Tuesday or Wednesday episode that'll come out. Um, but we, again, hope you enjoyed this stuff. We hope you enjoyed the, <laughs> enjoyed the, uh, interview with Isaiah. That was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, besides that, I guess we'll see you early next week. And uh, have, have a good weekend, everybody. Yeah, everyone have a great weekend. See you guys.